In this problem, we have a density function f of y, and we have to answer various questions. Let's go ahead and go through them one by one. So part A says to show that f of y has the properties of a density function. Let's go ahead and work through that. So solution. So the first property of a density function that we should check is that f of y is non-negative for all values of y. So note here that b is positive. That's really important, and we'll need to use that. So let's look at different cases. So for y greater than or equal to b, little f of y is going to be equal to the top piece, so b over y squared. So this means that y is also positive, because b is positive. And so if y is greater than or equal to b, it must also be positive. Plus it's being squared, so that'll also ensure that it's positive. And then b is positive, so positive or positive is positive. So this is certainly greater than or equal to 0. And for y less than b, we have um, that f of y is equal to 0. So otherwise, it's going to be equal to 0. You could say that as well. So in that case, it's going to be greater than or equal to 0. So in any case, uh, it's greater than or equal to 0. So in any case, in any case, f of y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, that takes care of the first condition. The second condition is that when we integrate from negative infinity to infinity, uh, we should get 1. So I'm going to scroll down because I'm running out of room. And I'm going to go ahead and rewrite our function down here because we'll need it. So we had f of y equal to, and it was b over y squared. Uh, and that was for y greater than or equal to b. Let me just go back and look. I haven't done this problem yet. So yep, OK. And it was 0 elsewhere. Yeah, I have not done this problem uh, prior to making this video, so I'm going extra, <laughs> extra slow. So now we have to check the second condition, and that's that uh, when we integrate from negative infinity to infinity, we get 1. So let's do that. So negative infinity to infinity of f of y dy, and this should be equal to 1. So uh, it's going to be, we're basically going to be integrating 0 unless y is greater than or equal to b. So we can basically write this as the integral from, and let's go ahead and, and maybe show all the steps. So from negative infinity to b, it's going to be 0 dy plus, and then from b to uh, infinity, it's going to be uh, b over uh, y squared dy. I'm breaking it up at b because uh, for y bigger than b, it's this, and otherwise it's 0. So in other words, for y less than, than b. So this the first integral takes care of the case for all the y's less than b. The second integral takes care of the case for all the y's uh, bigger, bigger than b. So the first integral, uh, let me just show all the steps so you see it, is going to be equal to a constant. Because when you integrate um, 0, you get a constant. Uh, before I do that, though, um, well, let me just do it. So constant, and we're going from negative infinity to b, being a little bit terse here. Why not? Plus, to integrate this one, we do have to do some work. So I'm going to go ahead and do two things. One, I'm going to replace this with a variable and write a limit sign. Two, I'm going to bring the y squared upstairs. I'm going to write this as the limit. And I'm running out of letters here. I'll use a. a goes to infinity. And we're going from b to a of b y to the negative to dy. So basically, just replace the infinity with the variable a, and then let a go to infinity. That's what you're supposed to do in these improper integrals. I didn't do it here in this integral because I was just lazy, so I'll, I'll, I'll do it all over here on the, on the left. So I'll replace this one with a letter. I'll use the same letter we can. So limit a goes to negative infinity showing all of the painful work, c, and this is from a to b, plus limit a goes to infinity. Okay, And now we'll integrate this one. When we do that, we add 1 and divide. So 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. So this will be 
negative b y to the negative 1 and we're going from b to a okay again we're allowed to use a because the, these limits are separate right they're two separate thought processes it's just a dummy variable so in the first one uh, calculus tells us that we plug into b so that means we just get c so a goes to negative infinity so you plug in the a and you just get c you subtract sorry you plug in the b and you just get c you plug in the A, you just get C. Might say plug into what? Plug into nothing. That's the whole point. There's no variable there, so you just get C every time. And then plus the limit as A goes to infinity. Uh, so think of this as negative B over Y, right? Because you can really bring the Y downstairs. So we're plugging in A. So you get negative B over A minus, so it turns into a plus, B over B. Right, it's minus and minus, and it's a plus, so it turns into a plus. And the y is coming downstairs. That's what we're replacing the numbers on the bottom. All right, this is equal to the limit as a approaches negative infinity. C minus c is zero. Plus, here we can take the limit. A is approaching infinity. B is a constant, so this piece here is approaching zero. This is zero, and then this is just going to be one, so plus one. This limit here is 0, so we just get 0 plus 0 plus 1, so we get 1, and that's how pros do it. We've shown that it satisfies the properties of a density function. Good stuff. Okay, took, a little, took me a little bit more thought than I thought it would. <laughs> Part B, find f of y, so I'll squeeze that in here. So by definition, or a property of f of y, which however you want to look at it, is that you can write it as the improper integral, integral from negative infinity to y of f of t dt. So we're going to use this formula to come up uh, with uh, big F. Okay, that's what we're going to use. So um, as before, you know, um, when we integrate from negative infinity to y, it depends on what y is, right? So um, let's look at cases. Let's look at the case first where y is less than b. So if if y is less than b, we have uh, f of y is equal to, this is going to be the improper integral from negative infinity to y, where y is a number less than b. But y is less than b, so that means that it's going to be 0, right? And this is 0 dt. And when we integrate 0, we get a constant, just like before. Like if you think back to this piece here, you know, whenever you have a definite integral and you're integrating 0, you're going to get 0 because of the subtraction behavior. It's going to happen every single time, right? So this is just going to be 0. Okay, if y is greater than or equal to b, same thing, we have big F of y, right, just like before, big F of y is equal to negative infinity. I'll go ahead and write the y and the f of t dt. So we see it in its complete form. So that's the definition. So in this case, we would break it up. We would go from, uh, if you wanted to show all the work, you'd go maybe from negative infinity, okay, negative infinity to uh, maybe, maybe b. And in that case, it's going to be 0. And then you'd go from b to y. And in that case, y is bigger than b, so it would be uh, b over y squared. So b over t squared dt. Almost messed up, right? We have to use t. So remember, we're integrating from negative infinity to y, so we have to get there. So the natural way to break this up is to break it up at b, because we know that for values less than b, little f is equal to 0. So that's the uh, natural place to, to break it up. And we know that this first integral is 0 for the same reasons as before. In fact, look, it's the same integral. It's the same one, except the variable is different. Here, we can bring that t upstairs, that t squared. So this is b y b t to the negative 2 dt. Okay, let me scroll down here. I'm running out of room. So when we integrate here, we add 1 and we divide. So this is equal to negative b t to the negative 1. I'm just going to bring it down. I'm going to take a big leap here. And we're going from b to y, okay, from, from b to y. Uh, plug in the y uh, first, so we get negative b, OK? 
Okay, negative b over y, right? Negative b over y, and then subtract, and then subtract, but you were already subtracting, so you put a plus, so that's b over b. And b over b is 1, so this is going to be negative b over y plus 1. So this is 1 minus b over y. Wow, so that's for y greater than or equal to um, b. So big F of y, let's write the final answer down over here, is equal to a piecewise function. And we have two cases. So for y greater than or equal to b, we know it's 1 minus b over y. And otherwise, in other words, for y less than b, so elsewhere, but I'll say y less than b, same thing, it's going to be uh, 0. So that would be the distribution function or the cumulative distribution function. So many people skip this step here. If you look in like a book or something or online, the step won't be shown. But it really is there. And I think it's nice to just think about it and realize that it is there and it does go away. Because remember, you're going from negative infinity all the way to y. So you can't just say it will be to y. I mean, you can because it's going to be 0, but it's important to think about it and know that you know it does exist. It is part of the mathematics that we are doing. Part C, you have to find this here. Probability that y is greater than b plus c for c greater than 0. So let me write that down. So we want the probability that y is greater than b plus c. So to do this, what we can do is we can use this here. So first note that using basic rules of probability, this is 1 minus the probability of the complement. So that'll be y less than or equal to b plus c. And the reason I did that is because by definition, big F of y is equal to the probability that big Y is less than or equal to little y. That's the definition, right? That's actually what it is, okay? That's what it is. So this is equal to 1 minus big F. You see, what's your little y here? It's B plus C. So this is B plus C. And so now we just directly plug it into this formula, which is super awesome. So this is 1 minus, uh, and then we're using, um, oh, so Y here, is bigger than b, right? Because this is your y, you see, b plus c. And that's bigger than b, right? b plus c is bigger than b because c is positive. So this will, it means you use the first piece. So this is 1 minus b over b plus c, right? Plugging this in for your y in the formula here. The 1's cancel and you distribute the minus 1. So you just end up with b over b plus c. And that would be the answer to part C. Really intense. Part D, let me go up and look at it. Okay, P of Y greater than B plus D. Okay, let me write it down. So part D, we want the probability that Y is greater than, I believe it said B plus D, and then B plus C. Okay, B plus D, B plus D, given that it's greater than B plus C. And they should tell us something about C and D. I know they're positive, and there's, there's, another, there's, another, there's a key here. Yeah, they're positive, and D is greater than C, right? D is greater than C. So D here, whoops, I forgot to put the Y. Let me just write it again. P of Y greater than B plus D, given that Y is greater than B plus C. And I already forgot D is bigger than C. B plus D, B plus C, D bigger than C. Yep, good. D bigger than C. That's key. All right, so to do this, we're going to go back to, like, basics. If you have the probability of A given B uh, from, from probability theory, this is the probability of A and B. You and them. And then on the bottom, you just put this piece here. That's how I memorize it. So you end them, and then this piece goes in the bottom. We're going to apply that here to this problem. Oops, running out of room, so i got to finish it here. <laughs> this is equal to. So we're going to end them. So it'll be y. Oops, 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 oops. So it'll be p of y greater than b plus d. And y greater than b plus c. Right, that's us ending them. That's the top piece. Over 
the bottom piece, P of y greater than b plus c. Okay, so d is bigger than c. Okay, so we know that, right? d is bigger than c. So we want y to be bigger than b plus d and y to be bigger than b plus c. Well, that just means that the top piece is just y bigger than b plus d because d is bigger than c. Because if y is bigger than b plus d, then it's certainly bigger than b plus c because d is bigger than c. So this is y bigger than b plus d. And then on the bottom, it's uh, the probability that y is bigger than b plus c. So y bigger than uh, b plus c, I believe we worked that out already, right? That was b over b plus c. So that's going to go on the bottom, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it up here because I'm running out of room. So we have PY greater than B plus D. PY greater than B plus C. Okay. So the bottom piece, we know what that's going to be because we worked it out. So it's B over B plus C. Okay, we worked that piece out already uh, in, in part C, okay? So now we just have to work out the top piece, Y greater than B plus D. So it should be very similar to what we did up here. So if you do P of Y bigger than B plus D, that's going to be one minus P of Y less than or equal to B plus D, just like before, which is one minus, and then just copying it from above, right? Same thing. Just plug in the B plus D here for the Y. So it'll be parentheses one minus B over b plus d. The ones cancel, the negative and negative become positive. You get b over b plus d. This will be b over b plus d. So this is equal to, so you have b over b plus d, and you're dividing by that piece. So you multiply by the reciprocal, so that'll be b plus c over b. The b's cancel, and so you end up with b plus c. Kind of rushing here at the end, sorry. B plus D. Handwriting is falling apart. Problem took way too long, but that is the final and the correct uh, answer. So a uh, long problem, um, and it takes a lot of thinking, uh, a little bit harder. Uh, I mean, this, this is a lot of work for, for one problem. I hope this video is helpful to someone out there in the world who is learning some, uh, some calculus-based um, probability stuff. Good luck.